What's up guys, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 33 of the tutorial series on Amazon API Gateway Tutorial. In this tutorial, I will take you through the resource-based policy within API Gateway. So what exactly is resource-based policy? So resource-based policy is a type of policy that can be attached to a resource, right? So for example, we can attach the resource-based policy to Amazon S3, which is also known as a bucket policy, right? So not every resource support the uh, resource based policy but a uh, few services support or few resources support uh, that policy right so how it differs from identity based policy so basically identity based policy are attached to the iam entities like users groups or roles and that can define what action those entities are capable of taking or doing on which resources right so just to summarize that resource based policy can be applied to the resource directly right and whereas identity based policy uh, can be applied to the iam entities like users or the roles or the groups right so this is kind of the basic difference between uh, these two policy right so there are other type of policy within aws right so but that is something we are not going to cover as a part of this tutorial so now the question is that what we can achieve with the resource policy within API gateway, right? So for example, if you want to allow or deny access to certain users from a specified AWS account, uh, that is kind of the cross account access, then you can manage using the resource based policy, right? So you can allow a user from other account or you can deny a user from uh, any other account or the current account, right? Uh, the other thing uh, we can do is that we can allow or deny traffic based on the IP address range or based on the CIDR blocks, right? And uh, we can also allow or deny traffic based on the VPC or the VPC ID, right? So basically in this tutorial, we will configure resource based policy on IP address, right? So we will control the traffic uh, based on the uh, IP address, right? So we will allow or we will deny for accessing certain resource within this uh, API endpoint that we have, as you can see on my screen, right? So uh, before we move on with the defining or the definition of the resource policy, let's navigate to resources first. So here I have two resources that is slash access and slash restrict with the get method uh, with this very simple Lambda function attached as the backend, right? So at this point of time, I have not applied or I have not defined any sort of resource based policy. So, and I have also uh, deployed this, right? So this should work fine. So let's have a look. So as I mentioned, I have deployed this. So I will navigate to stages to copy the invocation URL. So copy, I will go back to Postman and I will paste it over here. Maybe let me close this. And we have resource that is access with the get method. And I will say send and this should work fine. Right, and as you can see, we have status 200 and the message. Similarly, we have other resource that is slash restrict. And this should also work fine. Right, so both are working fine. Now uh, let's move on with the resource policy. So to go ahead and define or configure the resource policy, uh, we need to click on resource policy from the left panel, right? And here, uh, as you can see here, we have three buttons uh, that depict some sort of example, right? So let's have a look at the AWS account whitelist. So here, as you can see, uh, this is the very simple policy here. We have version and the statement and within statement, we have all the configuration uh, for this policy, right? So we will start with the effect. So effect can be allow or deny, right? So whether you want to allow certain action on the given resource to the given uh, principle or whether you want to deny, right? And then uh, we have principle in place. So the principle can be a uh, wildcard. It means uh, everything or it can be a uh, account, AWS account, cross account, or it can be a user ARN or it can be a role ARN, right? And then we have action that what action uh, we want to allow or deny that is basically execute hyphen API colon invoke. 
so we want to allow or deny the invocation of the uh, certain resource so which resource we are talking about so that is something we will be defining within the uh, resource part right so here uh, we have this execute hyphen api colon followed by the particular resource that you want to define here so for example you want to allow or deny to all the resources within this api endpoint then this is going to be the wildcard right so something like this but if you want to allow or deny access to certain resource like for example in my case i have a restrict resource right to which i want to allow so i have to explicitly define slash version one this is the stage name followed by the http verb so that's going to be the get method or it can be a wildcard as per your requirement right and finally the resource name so that's restrict in my case right so this is how you can uh, define or configure a policy so this was basically the AWS account whitelist. Now, if we look at the IP range blacklist, then it looks something like this, right? So here everything remains as it is except the condition that we have. So here we will be applying the condition based on the IP address that we want to allow an action or we want to deny an action, right? And similarly, we have source VPC whitelist. So again, only the condition changes. Now here, instead of AWS source IP address, uh, here we have a condition that is string not equals uh, with the VPC ID, right? So that's how uh, basically you can define the resource policy and you can play around with these parameters. So as I mentioned, uh, we will be covering the IP address part, right? So I have clicked on IP range blacklist and I will certainly remove uh, this another statement that is allow. So as I have showed you or I have taken you through that we are able to invoke both the resources successfully. So now in this case, I want to deny an access to both the resources, right? So here I will say effect as deny principle as asterisk action remain as it is that is invocation here resources within resources. I want to deny for all the resources. So I will simply put in wildcard over here. And within the IP address uh, condition, I will replace it with the IPv4. That is my current IP address. So I will copy and paste it over here, right? Now, if you look at the resource, then it looks something like this. That is execute hyphen API colon forward slash wildcard, right? Now, as soon as I will save this, it will be changed to ARN, right? So keep this thing in mind. So while you are defining the policy manually, then you need to mention the ARN, right? So, or maybe you can paste it over here and it should be able to uh, convert it to ARN. So now we have successfully defined the policy. So what does this policy mean that we want to deny access to all the resources? So the user should not be able to invoke or access the resources, right? Uh, from this IP address. So we are denying that. Right. So once you are done with the resource policy, navigate to resources and here we need to deploy the API. So say action, deploy API, select the deployment stage and say deploy. Now the API is deployed successfully. Uh, now we can go back to Postman and try to invoke, right? So here I'm invoking slash restrict. Let's say send. So now as you can see, it returns status 403 with a message saying anonymous is not authorized to perform this action, right? And similarly, if I go ahead and invoke slash access, then also we will get the same status code that is 403. Now if I go ahead and change the network, so I'm switching the network. So we will see whether we are able to invoke this API endpoints or not from the different IP address, right? Because we had limited uh, that condition to one specific IP. So now I am connected, right? So let me go ahead and invoke this send.
So now as you can see, we are not able to access from other IP address too, right? That's because we had removed the allow block, right? And we don't have allow block over here within the source policy, right? So it will certainly uh, stick to this, right? So if we go ahead and uh, put the allow block, so let me copy this and let me bring back this, maybe not. copy and I will paste it over here right now I think it should allow me now instead of this stage variable things I will put in wildcard and I will say save and click on resources redeploy the API Now let's go back to Postman and have a look. So now as you can see, uh, we are able to access this API endpoint from the different IP address, right? Since we put the allow block. So earlier we didn't had the uh, allow block. So that's the reason it was blocking from everywhere. So it's just the deny policy. Right now, if I go back to the same network, I hope uh, my IPv4 address does not change. So let me try this, try to reload this. So it's the same. So now if I go ahead and invoke this, then it should return an exception. As you can see, now it returned an exception saying 403 forbidden, right? So this is how you can allow and block uh, certain things or certain resources using resource based policy, right? So let's have a look at one more example. Let's go back to the resource policy. Now, uh, let's say uh, instead of all the resource, right? Instead of all the resource, let me put it this way, slash, right let's say i want to deny for only version one that is stage get method slash restrict right so i want to only deny for this resource from this particular ip address and rest the user should be able to access right so let me save this redeploy it actions so deploy api deploy now let's go back to postman let's try to invoke this that is slash access resource and we should be able to successfully invoke that let's see so as you can see here we have the status code 200 and we are successfully able to invoke this slash access resource now if i go ahead and try to invoke slash restrict then it should throw an exception so as you can see, uh, it's returning 403 forbidden, right? And now if I go ahead and change the IP address, then I should be able to access both the resource, right? So let me do that. So now let's try again. As you can see, it returns status code 200. And if I try to invoke slash access resource, then also it should return status code 200, right? So, uh, well, this is how you can uh, implement or you can add on resource policy based on your requirement or the use case. So this was the quick example that I wanted to show you uh, based on IP address. And as per your requirement, you can put together number of resources and the condition, right? So well, uh, that's all I wanted to cover in this tutorial. Now, one more thing uh, I want to highlight is that we can use API gateway resource policy together with the IAM policy, right? So 
Now, if the principal in the policy is set to asterisk that is wildcard, then other authorization types can be used alongside the resource policy, right? So in short, resource policy and other authorization can work together. So, well, uh, that's it. And as usual, if you want me to do a tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below and I will try my best to come up with a tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments, then again, please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time.